My name is Chris Rowland. I'm the CEO of Vesco. Vesco stands for Ooze Valley Energy Services Company. And we've been based in Lewis since 2007. And we started up from, um, uh, came out of a transition town group that was concerned about climate change and the use of fossil fuels and the effect that they were having on our environment. And uh, transition towns had an energy group and I met various other people in the energy group um, who decided we'd set up a local community energy company and we called it Avesco. Vesco's mission uh, to power as much of Lewis Town and Lewis District's energy with renewables um, and to help others to do the same. So it's about uh, powering up in Lewis, local renewable generation, and also powering down, educating people to use less energy. We are a not-for-profit company, and so um, anything that we make after we pay for our shareholders and maintaining our sites then goes back into the community, either in the form of a community benefit fund or community services. So we have um, local students come and do work placements with us. Uh, we go out to local schools and educate young people about uh, renewable power. And uh, we help people with their energy bills and um, help them also reduce the energy that they're consuming in their own homes by giving them good advice about how to do that. Okay, so Avesco now has 15 rooftop solar sites in Sussex, most of those in the Lewis district. Some of those are installed on local schools like Priory School and Wallen School, and some of those on local businesses like Barkham Nursery and Brickyard Farm. They're generating power, paying back our shareholders, and um, providing those businesses with either free, in some cases, or low-cost energy. And one of the first projects that we did at Avesco was at the Harvey's Depot, where we raised a community share offer, and uh, we installed uh, 98 watts of solar PV on the roof of the depot of the local brewery. And uh, we had a share offer, and uh, we invited people in the town to come to the town hall and invest in um, one of the first solar PV systems um, using the feed-in tariff, using a community share offer. And we installed that, I think it was about 2011, and uh, that's been operating for over 10 years now and generated over a million kilowatt hours. I'm Nick Rouse, I'm the technical director of Avesco. I answer all the technical questions and work out the figures for what the systems do. This system here is our smallest system, a contrast to the Harvey's one, which was our biggest one to date. But it does share one factor with them in that a lot of the load is a cooler. And the nice things about cooler is that they use most of their power at the time when the sun is sh shining most. Unlike other places where you use most of it for heating, and the heating is highest in midwinter when the sun is lowest, with cooling, we, we get a good match of uh, demand and the supply. So this supplies well and helps their cooler. So as part of our community benefit work, um, we go out to schools, educational establishments. Uh, we take a bike which powers lights to show um, uh, the public how difficult it is to make energy and why it's really important to conserve it. And we've got lots of tools and models and things like that that show how solar power is generated, how electricity is made, how wind power is made. Um, and we just really want to be involved in the education. And in fact, Avesco is a national award winner um, uh, in 2014. And one of the schools that we've got solar panels on is also a national award winner, and that's King's Academy Ringer. And they've got two of our Avesco solar systems on their roof, as well as a wind turbine, a ground source heat pump, and a biomass boiler. So they're sort of real leader as a school, showing how this micro-generation technology can work and uh, provide decentralised energy to that school. So what we really want to do is um, try and get to about 26 megawatts, which is approximately the domestic electricity consumption of the town of Lewis, just as a goal to have. And so the next project we're working on is a 17 megawatt solar farm just north of, um, in, in the Lewis district, north of Ringma, and we've got planning permission for that solar farm now. So hopefully in the next few years, we'll be building that project and we'll be able to say that Avesco has enough projects to generate the equivalent of all of the domestic energy use of the town of Lewis.
Powering down is all about reducing your energy consumption. And uh, we've been working very closely with our local authority, Lewis District Council, and we've had some funding from the lottery as well um, for Ooze Valley Climate Action. And we've been using that to employ part-time energy champions. And we use this room here that I'm sitting in in order to give advice to local people about how they can power down. Hello, my name's Claire. Um, I'm a programme manager for Avesco and I help to manage and oversee our energy advice work here, which means working closely with our energy advisors, delivering energy advice into uh, local communities and for residents. We're in our dedicated energy room that we have uh, for Avesco. This is quite a new space for us and it's still kind of in development and progress, but here we have a weekly drop-in surgery open to the public uh, that's currently on Wednesday mornings and we have um, basically what underpins our kind of energy advice work and to powering down which starts with behaviour change, the small things we can do in our households to help save money and energy and then for those looking to perhaps invest a bit more in their houses um, we talk right through the different elements of making your own heat and power and green energy options and um, we are able to offer expertise advice on solar thermal for example. So our energy advice work has really grown over the last year. Um, just to reflect back on that, when Avesco traditionally was giving energy advice it was really around tariffs and switching and that was quite easy, it was quite tangible and yet then boom, big changes in the market, energy crisis, volatile situation and so our response had to be quite different. It's fair to say we kind of have three three main aims to our energy advice and that's help and support to those who are fuel poor. It's reducing energy, uh, reducing domestic energy use in the house and then also ultimately helping to reduce carbon footprint and build more resilience in our communities as we face a climate crisis. So I'm John Oma, I work for Avesco uh, and I'm an energy champion. So what we do is we meet general public in town hall or library, food bank, um, in any other places where people will, will invite us to go. And we give people advice about their energy and that can be literally just from looking at a bill, making sure that they're paying what they feel is the right amount and, and they're not on a tariff that's not suitable to them, for example. Um, sometimes people have problems with their meters um, and we can just have a, a look at their, their whole situation, how they live themselves, how they heat their homes um, and see if there's anything that we can do to help them. So normally I would go to the food bank um, a couple of times a week in, we've, we've got four food banks that we work with at the moment and we've been going there for some months um, up to I think it's about a year um, for the longest one and turn up the food bank is obviously a very busy place there's lots of people they're feeding around 50 to 80 families a week out of those places so we've been invited to go in there because um, they're, they're not easy places to go because people are there because they're in, a, in some sort of crisis you know they, they can't feed their families so energy is just another problem for them, but we can be there to not only help them with that, but signpost them to things that might be useful, vouchers, energy saving tips at home, things that cost them nothing. And we can give them um, some free things like light bulbs and draft excluders and um, signpost them to other services that might be able to help them, debt relief debt and, and debt management. And these things are, you know, when you've got those sort of problems, they pile up very, very quickly. So at Avesco, um, we have produced this leaflet, which is a really excellent, simple guide for people to learn about how much things cost to use in their home in terms of electricity. So for a lot of people, they will, they will be worried about, you know, the laptop charging or the mobile phone or, you know, things like that, um, lights being left on. But actually those are very, very small drain on power compared to the oven or the kettle or the tumble dryer or the plug-in electric heater, which costs all the hair dryer. So basically the, the more heat something produces, the more it's gonna cost you to run. 
I'd say a key part of our working and delivering energy advice and the successes of that has been working with different partners and in collaboration with different organisations. Um, we're quite lucky we have a supportive local authority district here and on top of that we found really kind of piggybacking onto existing community groups and events has been quite key. We're not an outreach facing organisation um, so to tap into people that are already kind of hands-on delivering that kind of work has been really helpful so key example of that is community supermarkets and food banks um, a lot of which take places in church or other community settings. Well, we want to scale this up um, across uh, the whole of the southeast and across the country. One of the things that happened when we did our first project at Harvey's Depot, with lots of people would call us uh, of ESCO and say, how did you do that? How did you do a community share offer? How did you put those solar panels on the roof of a local business? And we started to tell them, but we realised that uh, that was quite an undertaking. So we created a new company called Community Energy South, and that's been offering advice to uh, other people across the country who want to set up their own local community energy groups and replicate what Avesco has done. And that's already happening. So you'll see other local community share offers all around England where people are copying the Avesco model. I think if you wanted to uh, get started and sort of replicate what Avesco is doing, the best thing to do is contact an organisation like Community Energy South or maybe Community Energy England who can put you in contact with um, groups who are in your area who can tell you how they are doing this. To have a really good community energy group, you're looking for certain things. You know, it's really good to have someone who knows about legal or someone who knows about finance or someone who's a technical person, an engineer or something like that. Um, and then if you can get those people together, and that's what we were lucky enough to have at Avesco, the right people who came together and a good person who's good at marketing or something like that, because you're going to do a community share offer. If you can put all of that in place and you can find some sites, um, and you want to um, get a number of sites to make this work really well, or one really big one, uh, then it's possible that local groups can do this themselves and follow in what Avesco's doing. And what Avesco wants now is we're looking in our scale up, as well as the solar farm that we want to build, we want to uh, encourage local businesses in our Lewis district and Eastbourne area to come to us and say, well, we can't afford to put solar on the roof of our building. Can you help us reduce our energy bills with a community share offer which will put solar on our local business and then for power up to power down.